Hello everybody. Okay, this is gonna be um, a very strange live stream today. I have absolutely no idea what you've just seen um, and heard because as far as I was concerned, I was already talking to everybody, but um, apparently I wasn't. So I have no idea. Somebody please tell me that I'm here with you today and that you can see me. Um, I nearly said loud and clear. Just, just tell me that I'm all here, hopefully. So that would be really great because otherwise I've no idea what's going on today. Um, yeah, I'll wait until I start anything else until I hear that I'm actually with you. And I'm... Um, excellent. Okay. Sounds like I'm finally here with you. I don't know, I must have been somewhere in the cloud. Um, somewhere. In fact, I've just come back from the, um, um, the Antarctica. I'm, I brought one of my little friends with me. This is what we're doing today. Um, it's a little penguin, really easy needle felting project. The techniques that you're learning today is just making basic shapes and then attaching basic shapes together to make um, one big shape and then adding little features like the little beak and the eyes and um, maybe if we've got time to add the little feet on there as well. So the baby penguin, really easy to do. All you need for this is um, eight grams of Gotland um, Island Grey, which is that lovely grey wool here. And then you need um, three grams of Shetland, which is the white. Um, if you've got any other white, then that's obviously fine too. But we love the Shetland because it makes it's a really lovely um, white white. And then three grams of black, which is to cover the little penguin's head, make the beak and the feet. And then if you do have um, little eyes, little um, glue in eyes, which we sell on at, at our website, then you can put, um, finish him off really easily and have the sparkle in there straight away. But otherwise, they can be needle felted onto the penguin as well. And I do apologize. I have actually got a cold, which um, I don't know why I'm apologizing, but I feel like I need to keep my throat nice and um, juiced. Uh, not juiced, but um, I don't know what the word is. Um, wet, wet, maybe. Um, so I'm going to have a little sip of tea and of course reminds me everyone a maker is our Facebook page which you are more than welcome to join and I know lots of you have already joined. And before we start I will just say that we have got a competition on today again um, during this live stream but also during Thursday which is the 2nd of October 2020 where you can also win yourself um, a, a, a gift which um, I will tell you about in a minute. But if you're watching this any time in the future, because this uh, tutorial stays on YouTube, then um, obviously that competition has expired. It's only today um, on, on this very day, which is the 29th of September, which is a Tuesday. And then again on Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook, you have another chance to win yourself a, da -da -da -da, a pumpkin pack. Now we've done a live stream on the pumpkins, so you get all the help you need to make lots of um, lovely little pumpkins or maybe just one ginormous big pumpkin, which that pack allows you to make as well. Or you can make them small. We've also got some um, where you can add faces. All depends how um, adventurous you want to be for um, Halloween, um, Thanksgiving, fall decorations, autumn decorations, wherever you are in the world you uh, will get um, joy out of this. And to win this pumpkin pack, you just have to tell us the name of your cute little pe penguin. And um, as you all also know, is just leave the name in the comments and we do a complete random pick. So we don't go by whatever name we find the nicest or the, the most favorable, um, because that's way too um, um, uh, objective subjective way too personal um everybody has a different view so we're just gonna pick whichever i'm um, subjective that's the word um we're just gonna pick which wherever the finger lands on the list there, that one and um and then we announce it at the end of the live stream so stay tuned in um for first of all learning how to make this little penguin and as you know i'm always going to zoom in onto my um, overhead camera so that you can see really close up what I'm actually doing and I'm just gonna have before I do this I will have just a very quick look at who is joining us today because it's nice to say hello but if you're watching this any other time then I probably won't shout out your name unless you so happen to be called Diane or Laura or Pamela or Donna or Faith um, or Sandra or Roger or um, Rachel or 
um, well, any other name that um, is here today, but if you're one of those names, then I say hello to you in the future when you're watching this. And Emma um, is here from the makers to support us. So um, hi, Emma, and um, thank you for bearing with me today in my complete chaotic muzzy head. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Got my um, earth friendly felting mat at the ready. It's empty at the moment. And if you remember, we were talking that because we don't have a penguin pack as such, you can actually use the woodland pack um, to make the penguin. You've got lots of um, colors in there that you actually don't need, but you certainly um, could use these three colors here already. And then if you wanted to, uh, baby pen penguins actually don't have um, a contrasting bright color, but you could use a little bit of this fox orange, or if you've got a tiny bit of yellow in your stash, you could use that too. But saying that they don't actually have um, penguins, if you look at real penguins, they don't have a contrasting color, not like the adults. So if you, um, um, yeah, if you, if you don't, have that wool, then that's fine too. And we're starting out by making the body. Now I know that there's 20 grams in 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 this um, woodland pack. So if I have half it, then I know I've got 10. And if I use the pile that feels slightly lighter, then I know I've probably got about eight. That's um, it's it's with with uh, needle felting. It doesn't need to be so precise when you're making little creatures like that one. I lay I lie him down so you can see where where we're heading with um with these. There we go, he can stand up. Um, or he could sit, sit here. There, you can see him lying down. Maybe that way. There we go. Right, so um, first of all, to make a nice um, round shape, that's going to be the body shape, like this one here, you've got your um, grey wool bat. We're using bats, and what you can see me do already is that there, if there's wispy bits, I'm actually putting them, I'm actually putting them, um, on top of each other to make a nice uh, bouncy flat thing. Turn this one the right way around so it doesn't get dizzy. And then um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this wool in and I tuck the sides in as well. So roughly to get the size of um, of the height of the penguin. So um, I've got a nice new pink tape measure here and I'm just going to quickly whiz across it to measure it. So it's about 10 centimeters that I'm trying to make um, a, a sausage shape and with all of the basic shapes that you're doing if you're rolling them up you try and get those wispy fibers right to the very end um, so that you can tuck them in the very very end with your coarse felting needle so do use a coarse felting needle with this type of wool give them a few stabs and you've made yourself a little um, well could be all kinds of shapes but it's almost like it's almost like a pebble actually, a long pebble. And now all you're going to do is you're going to keep stabbing that pebble shape to solidify it. And at some point when you're tucking all the fibers in around the sides, you also want to make sure that you create a flat base. Now if you hear me making um, smacking noises and gurgly w weird noises is because I've got a cough sweet in my mouth so that my throat doesn't give up on me while I'm trying to talk to you. So I'm stabbing here into the base to flatten this one out and you can see what I'm doing is I'm going more into the center rather than right to the edge because it's it, um, anything that needs to stand solidly stands better if it's concave at the base rather than the edges are too rounded. So I'm trying to create that indentation here because that makes it a more solid base. If I was to stab right to the edge, all I'm doing is I'm rounding the edges off and then it becomes wobbly again. So this way it makes a really nice flat base and then it can stand really solidly already. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the top to um, felt um, the top round. So this time I'm going all around the top. So I'm not concentrating it on a flat disc shape. I'm actually going all the way around because I want it to be nice and um, round because that's where I'm going to attach the head uh, very shortly. And if you um, want to have a trick of how to make uh, this shape sh um, more squat now, so if you want to bring it down so that it, it becomes a bit shorter, 
Um, of course, you can still needle thread lots in it because it's very soft and this is quite solid. But if you want to bring the shape down, instead of just going into the top where you're making the top flat and then you're sort of wrinkling up the rest of it, sometimes what works really well is, is to go at a shallow angle into your shape so that you, the needle is going in, in, a, in that direction. And remember, wherever you're stabbing the needle is where the reduction takes place. And that way you're actually pulling the shape um, in, in, in lengthways in itself. And um, that is an, a better way of um, making it shorter and at the same time felting it down than just sort of going in from the top to make it um, slightly shorter. So this is a good way of a good technique to get your shape to get solid, to stay nice in shape, but at the same time bring the fibers in because all you're doing is you're just pushing the fibers in that way. So shortening um, that shape that way. Remember, if you have got any questions, then just fire away. Um, I will check in now and then to see if there are any questions that are being asked because it's um, always good to um, share them with everybody because you might be sitting at home thinking exactly that question and then if somebody asks it, it's like magic. You're totally um, in line with each other and obviously can read each other's thoughts. Um, I do want to tell you in a minute a very sad penguin story. Um, but I, I do this when I'm going into the big screen again. If you're felting along, then I will go into the big screen now and you can just perfect your little penguin shape. Um, similarly, if you have got a really fat little shape, then obviously keep stabbing in that direction to make it thinner. And if it's really long and thin, then maybe you just have to love a really long, long and thin penguin or add a little bit of um, a gray layer around um, the outside and it's just staying a taller penguin rather than a short penguin. Right, so I'm going to let you stab away while I'm going onto the front camera again and I will just tell you that little story. So I was um, a, a couple of days, th this is not a tooth by the way, I haven't got toothache or anything. This bump here is my cough sweet. Okay, just to reassure you I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not starting to grow funny lumps and bumps. Um, I made a little penguin like this because I, I absolutely love penguins. I wanted to, I love it that this with this felt. So this is our wool viscous felt that if you, if you have the, you can sort of let the ends of the scarf stick out and it looks like the penguin is standing in the, in a, a very strong wind and it's blowing the scarf to one side. And um, it so happened that on one of the social media sites, somebody said, can somebody please tell me how I can make a penguin? Um, and I got in, I, got, um, I said, oh, I can show it to you because I just happened to have made one. And um, that lady said, actually, I don't really want to make one. I want to buy one. I'm too upset to make one. And um, so then she told me, this is all in private messages. And excuse me, I just have to cough. <coughs> she was telling me in a private message that her nephew had just died, who was um, very young. I don't think he was even 20 yet. And it was so sad. I, honestly it was so sad and he loved penguins and she wanted to have a little penguin to put in his coffin with him okay I'm not going to start crying now because I cried all the tears that Atobi cried at the time about this sad story and so my the, the first little penguin that I actually made went on the journey wherever that boy went to he went with him um on his journey so okay dry your tears away it's fine um, life goes on, I suppose, and um, I felt, I just felt like if I've done nothing else during my whole life, at least I've made a little penguin to um, to make his aunt really happy and maybe him too. Okay, moving on swiftly because this is really getting to me now. Um, so I don't know where your shape is at, but mine looks a little bit like this. And so we're moving on to make the head now. I'm just putting my sweet on the other side. Right. Go to overhead again. Now you need about three grams of this wool. So if you split this in half, then you have got um, 10 on each side. And then you roughly break this into three equal portions. You just need a little bit of maths. And then um, you probably have three grams. Maybe you've got, this looks a bit smaller. So you have got 3.33 grams on each pile here. And just pick the one that you like to look best. And then um, on here, because white on white is not so 
great i'm going to bring in in fact i'm going to take out the felting mat just so that you can see what i'm doing so this time um if again if you've got bits that um are just hanging up, uh, around lay them on top and this time what we're doing is we're going to fold this in half so you've got one piece and you fold it in half okay and then you're going to roll in um the sides so that you end up with what appears to be almost like a, a snaily bit at the top because that's the fatter part where you've um where you've got the folded edge and a wispy end here i'll show you this again so you've got your patch of wool it's about as big as my hand like that i just fold it in half and then i'm going to roll it in i'm leaving these wispy ends sticking out just rolling these ends in here and then i close it up as i did before again use your coarse needle the shetland is a is quite a coarse fiber but it fells down really lovely <coughs> apologies for my cough and i'm going to bring my felting mat in because now i'm going to um, lay it down and all i'm doing is i'm literally just felting down the um, area that has got that neater top and I'm felting that down because that is going to be the top of the uh, penguin's head. It doesn't need to be um, terribly, terribly neat because um, we're going to cover it with black at some point. And all I'm doing is I'm just felting the um, probably sort of like two third of that rolled up shape. Um, so I've got my felting mat the wrong way around. So no, I haven't. It's that way around. It's fine. It's just upside down. <coughs> I haven't been coughing all day. I know it's you know when you when you know that you shouldn't be coughing because it's like embarrassing especially at the moment because everybody will instantly think that you've got you've got the sea thing. But actually all I've got is a head cold and my I'm completely blocked. My head's blocked. And um I haven't been coughing at all and it's just because I I'm trying not to cough. It gets in my head and I start thinking about coughing and then I I, I feel like I've got a cough. So um yeah sorry I, I do apologize about this right so there there you go i've got this is sort of firmer felted than this fluffy bit here but i can give it a lot more um like um, firmness by stabbing into it a, lo a lot more like that and whilst you're doing this don't worry if this part here feels really long because what we're doing in a minute we're teasing some out and we're putting that to one side because we don't actually need all of that to attach it to um, the top of the penguin's body but while you are doing that I'm going to go in the pic big picture again I'm just going to have a quick look if we can see some um, fun names coming in um, from you all for the for your little penguins and I know Emma is at the other end and she will write down um, uh okay i don't even know where to uh yes oh somebody's just reminded me put thumbs up on the on the stream if you like what you're seeing because um that will give bring us up in the rankings um oh i can't find any of the names but i'm sure there are some really amazing ones i just there's just so many um I think I think it's because I've been prattling um, around for so long at the very beginning. I'm probably way too far up in the in the chit chat, which is it's just like it's like a novel. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, thank you, Jane. It's not the fibers that are flying around that make you cough, but it's it's lovely that you um, come up for a nice um, fresh honey and real lemon served with uh, served up will help your cough, Steffi. Do you know what? I'm actually allergic to honey, um, so that that's a bit of a bummer. Um, Oh, thank you, Faith. Uh, Faith, there's such a beautiful story, Steffi, to be able to offer love to those in need in whatever form it takes is a noble gesture. That penguin is exactly where he was made to be with someone who loves him. I've just tried to not cry and now I'm going to start start crying. Penfold Penguin, um, says Faith. Petunia, oh, well, that's a nice name. And Arctica, that's the name of the penguin. Um... What else have we got? Uh, Joe Cool, 
that's the name penguino popsicle flop <laughs> that's hilarious my penguin is business goose the japanese characters oh perfect yeah of course there's so many penguin characters mm, what else i think my penguin will be penelope that's a difficult one to pronounce mm, i did it penelope penelope the penguin even better love it um great bring them in um the um the names and um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you some of the projects that sophie and i have been working on um and this is not nothing to do with sophie's baby she's working on that as well but um i haven't got so much to do with that um so basically we've still got our subscription box for the otters which is um you've got another today and tomorrow to um buy the subscription box for the otters and they've been a really success um a real great success and they're still sort of lazing about there is um you can make one otter with um open eyes a snoozing otter and a little otter baby which um is being looked after by one or the other and um, that box is still available until the very very end of um, this month which is literally a minute before midnight and then uh, we're changing over to what everybody's probably been waiting for which is um, the wolf and the wolf I'm just gonna bring that over a bit you can make the wolf including you get everything to make the backdrop as well so you can make your very own um, big moon you can needle felt onto it um, to make a silhouetted tree there's an owl on this one but you could also do a raven and the and the wolf itself is there you go there we go yeah there you go so this is available from the 1st of October um, and um, that that's what you can get the subscription box we of course do a um a, um, a box unwrapped unboxing that's what we call it for all of our subscription boxes um which is also including the you can still do the autumn sprite which i've seen somewhere oh yeah there she is she's having a little snoozy sleep she's lost her toadstools but you can ah there and there's another one here now i'm sniffling as well dear oh dear there's the autumn sprite you can still do her um up until the end until the um until the end of september and then from the first of october you will get the little poppy fairy and this one is different in that she's a standing fairy and if you want to you can needle felt her little cute face which is a new thing that um, we're introducing to our fairy makes and um, the unboxing of course is on um thursday which is the second no it's on when no yeah it's on thursday Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yes, it's on the first of um, the first of October, which is Thursday at eleven a.m. Goodness me, honestly, my head's completely gone somewhere else. And then we um, have the surprise box, which currently is a seaside stroll, and the next one is going to be, I think it's going to be a woodland creatures theme. So um, I can't tell you, show you any of these because it's a surprise, so you you can't see that. Um, but that's just a, a quick diversion uh, to do with the maker's boxes and I'm just going to go back onto the penguin head. So once you've felted your head down, you can take out quite a substantial amount of this unfelted uh, wool here and then tease out the wool that's still unfelted and left over to sort of create a little, almost like a little um, um, join here. And then you take your um, take your grey um, shape here and all you're going to do is I'm going to lie this flat but all you're doing is you're stabbing the white wool into the top of the penguin but as close as you can to the white so you don't want it spreading out because we don't want to give the penguin a white cloak we want the head to be fastened on but we want the white wool to also disappear so that it's not um, spreading out um, over the penguin's chest or back so the, the way to do that is by stabbing the white wool into the penguin's neck rather than than um, getting it to spread out over the gray if some of the white goes a bit further where you want it to be like for example here then you can just use a little bit of gray and cover it up again 
So whenever you attach something to a shape, you will, will want to work on the, the main shape all over um, again, because as soon as you attach something, it looks completely different. So on my um, occasion, I do want to felt that head down a little bit more now that it's on. I'm just going to stop into there um, again at this shallow angle. I'm also noticing that, I don't know if you can see it, but my needle is beginning to bounce. And that is because the white Shetland has become quite solid. So now it might be the time to change to a slightly finer needle. So I'm going to use the medium needle that um, can now do the work. It's not bouncing anymore but it's actually doing the felting because you don't want to the needle to bounce. That is definitely a sign of the needle getting too thick for your needle felted project. Um, it, it's, sometimes it's hard to say which needle to use because, the, for example, the uh, spiral needles, which we sell, just trying to find one here. Mm -mm, sure, we've got one knocking around. Oh, this is one actually. Um, the, the spiral needle, it's often like a coarse needle, but it goes into the, the felt a lot longer than, for example, an equivalent gauge needle in a triangular shape. And it's almost like the spiral shape makes it thinner and easier to insert into the wool. So it, all, it often depends what kind of medium needle you're using, whether it is a, a triangular or um, a spiral one. And the only way to tell the difference, you can see it where the light, where it catches the light that it's actually a little, almost like a little spiral, like a little drill. And um, so you can see that with your with your eyes. Whereas if you look at a non, this is just a triangular needle, it's just the same um, on, it's just literally, if you took a cross section, you would see a triangular shape um, in that cross section, if you could um, blow that up. so. Just, yeah, and it feels very different. So even though we tell you which needle to use, if you have taken to the spiral needles or the cross star needles, then they might be slightly different in terms of the feel. Now I want to bring this head down a little bit. I feel that head is way too big on my little penguin and there's lots of air in there. So I'm going really, I'm going for it now to make that head um, smaller and um, more in line with the body. I'm not too worried about the shape of it or, or the size of it because I'm actually going to add black over the top and when I add the black it will also reduce the size at the same time. Now I'm going to use all the colors from the woodland pack because that's what we've been saying you can use but if I be totally honest I would prefer to use the dyed black for this because um, I think sort of penguins they're particularly nice and shiny black and that um, that natural black has got a a bit of a gray fiber running through it so i prefer to use the um the dyed black but i will stick with the natural black just for now and what we're going to do next and if you look at the penguin sort of side by side um this is a slightly lighter gray so let's not have that one here let's look at this one and what we need to do now is we need to paint that little face onto the penguin um i'm gonna let you do a bit more stabbing of the head and I just tell you about some of the other things that we're doing at the moment whilst you're finishing off your head and I, um, I just have to leave mine as it is for now. So I don't know if you saw but in our making needle felted animals book we have um, we have, we've been honoured to have Jane Emerson write the foreword for us here and of course if you don't know this but Jane became um, very popular because of her needle felted robin that she did uh, oh it's over 10 years ago now with um, or maybe it is just 10 years ago with um, Kirsty Olsop on Kirsty's handmade um, is it handmade I can't can never remember but it was one of the first TV series that Kirsty did with crafting and Jane was featured on that doing introducing needle felting into the uh, it, she actually put, put it into the public domain so we're always very grateful for her now Jane and I, we've known each other for years, only since she's done the Robin. And um, she's, um, we're going to do a Robin workshop together. Um, it's a, it's a, gonna be a Zoom workshop and we want to get as many people as we can to join us. She's a really fun person and we've got a bit of a, um, like quite a, a dynamic and energetic um, 
relationship going between the two of us. We will be in different locations, ob obviously, but we will be hosting the Zoom workshop together and then she will teach you how to do the needle felted robin that is the original robin that she made in the early days with Kirsty. And um, you can buy your Zoom ticket now because it's available on our on our website. You can it, the workshop itself is on the 30th of October, so it's um, just over four weeks away, and it's at 7 p.m. in the evening. And you can get your Robin pack posted to you together with a Zoom link, and then you can join us. Now the Robin itself is actually really really amazing. I really love him. I made one today just to show you. And um, it is a very different technique of some of um, uh, something that I haven't actually used before, but I'm really sold onto it. And he, um, you get everything to make this little robin. You get um, even the feathers on his tail. I've gone really big with those, but you can have you can shorten yours. And um, you also get the little stick, but it won't have the florist tape on it. That I've just added that later, so it, it's just a. Um, like a bamboo skewer that you get in your pack with it and we put a special treat in there for you as well because we all want to have a little bit of fun together and that's what the whole workshop is about it's really just relaxing maybe listening to some of the stories that Jane has to tell and, and maybe I come up with a few as well and um, having a good time walking away with a little Robin as well I really love this one so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing you all there. The instructions are in our usual style because I'm actually writing them again for, for Jane. So Jane will just come and um, teach how to make this little Robin. She actually, her name is Jane Emerson. So it's Jane with an A-Y and um, Emerson with one M, just in case you want to look her up. She's actually an amazing textiles artist. So if you haven't seen her work yet, go and see it because she also runs um, online classes and they are amazing. She's just one of these fun people where everything's possible. Once you give her um, a sewing machine and an um, embellishing machine, um, some wool fabric pieces and she's off. So if you want to experience something entirely different from just stabbing the single needle into wool then go and look her up it's uh, Jane Emerson um, design and um, she has got her own website so do go and see her um, virtually obviously and um, yeah hopefully we can um, have you all on our on our uh, little Robin extravaganza workshop um, if that's what we might be calling it stay there you silly Robin ah, ah, are you gonna stay there Ah, okay, we'll leave it like that. Right, going back to um, what's happening here with the Robin. As I said, we need to now put a little bit of black around his face. Now, I'm just moving my sweet to the other side of my cheek. Now, what you need to do is you need to literally paint the little um, mask onto and the, the cap onto the, rob onto the Robin. It's not a Robin, onto the Penguin. And for that, you find out what is the front. Um, so find a good, Robin's just collapsed. Try and make him stick in there again. No, he's not staying there. Anyway, we'll, we'll look at that later. And the way that I do this, so if you have your, if you determine where the front of your uh, little penguin is, and then all you need to do is just felt on um, a little wispy bit of the wool so that it's, um, it's fastened on in the center of your head. And then you're painting, literally painting, the shape of that um, of that sort of um, I don't know. It's like it's like the top of a heart. So the the, the white um, will look like um, like the heart, and the black will be the outside. So I'm just doing it bit by bit because I know the back is going to be um, covered in black, and so I'm just focusing on the really neat outline of. Um, start again here in the middle and then I'm going the other way around because I can fill in anything that's black later but I want the white to be really neat and so I'm just concentrating on getting the white inner right the white face and then I'm going to um, concentrate on filling in the black once I've created the frame for the white so I'm just um, literally felting that almost it's almost like a heart shape onto um, the penguin's head here 
there we go and you can even it out by just going straight into that um that line that you've created if you need to make it a little bit more symmetrical or even you can still do that whilst you don't worry at all about what's happening at the rest of um, the head right now because that can wait until you've done your neat bit here on the front and so that looks quite that looks quite neat now quite even now you can also just um, add a little bit of green here um, not green gray here again but bearing in mind that the penguin will probably wear a scarf which will cover up that part um, that might just be wasting your time right now and then you just literally covering in the rest of the head with black you really don't want any white patches that won't look very cool on this little penguin so do give it a nice um well i don't want to say thick layer but definitely one where there isn't any white poking through you're not building the size of the head up you're literally just coloring it in and this is coloring in the technique what we would call is coloring in with wool because you're coloring an existing shape in with um a new color okay so i'm going to do this all the way around here on the side as well just adding sorry i'm sniffling now as well just adding black onto the head aren't you pleased that you're so far away from me we're not in the same room we're on the other side of the screen you're in the safety of your home you don't have to en end up getting my cold and yet you can still get me to show you how to needle felt that's the great thing about um, using these um, online um, options that we've got now perfect right so the little penguin now has got his little head um, covered in black and he's got his little white, white, that was a German word that snuck in there then. The word for white is weiss in German. Um, his little white face mask. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the little beak for the penguin because we might as well put that on him now. You notice what I'm doing is I'm shaping his head as I'm adding, uh, as I'm felting the black wool down because you can still do that whilst you are um, coloring in the surface and to do the beak i'm taking a little bit of black and similar to how you made the head you've got a little patch of black here and you're folding this in half and then um, from the other side so this is where the folded edge is you're rolling this in so that you have a tight tight top that you've rolled in there and then on your felting mat you're shaping this into a beak shape so again, like with a head, you're just felting it down on one side and um, you try and felt it sort of very superficially so you don't push too many fibers into um, the felting mat because then you're just making it look fluffy again. And with all things, if they're too fluffy, you can actually cut off some of the fluffy fibers if they, if they bother you. But for now, I'm just leaving it as it is and I've got um, a long, long unfelted bit here which I'm going to again shorten like I did with the head this is just that it's a different shape now and I'm spreading out the unfelted fibers like you did with a head but you've got a beak here at the end and then you lay this on in front of the um, penguin's face just where the black dips into the head down there that's where you lay it on and then you felt it very gently onto the front of the penguin's face now it just reminds me when i run this as a workshop people often put this way too high up onto the top of the head and then it looked like he had a little cup like one of these baseball cups on with um with a shield at the top that's not what we want to do we really do want this to be in the middle of the face because that's where the beak needs to be and then you just round um the black off underneath the beak if there's sort of a, a long fiber that bothers you you might be able to just pull it out there we go and we just stub all around again because we've added something else which means we're inevitably stubbing elsewhere and so you've got a little um a little beak there you can uh, make it shorter by going along the shape as i showed you with a body and with a head <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Okay, I've just been told that I need to cut this um, this thread off my button 
Okay, I will. I probably, I probably, all, all of my clothes will probably fall off me now. This is the crucial part of holding it together. I hope this is better. If this, um, I, I'd be like that. Once you get caught on it, you just need to do something about it. We're very obliging here, Faith. So, um, all, all done. Is that better? Have I got anything else sticking out? No, all good. Um, so here we go. We've got a little penguin nose or beak even. Got a nice neat face and I'm not worried about this bit here because we're going to put a scarf on the penguin and now what I'm going to do is just so that we've got time for it to dry I'm actually going to put some eyes into the penguin and to do this I use my felting needle to make a hole if you do this remember it comes out somewhere else so have your finger away from this if you have an awl which um, I keep thinking I should have an awl here but I haven't and more to the point I haven't actually got any eyes here either um, ah that's bad okay <coughs> I'm going to don't look don't look got to um okay I've just had to take some eyes out of a penguin I haven't got my toolbox here I think it's still in um in somewhere else anyway there's an eye and um I'm just nothing's happened I've just finding eyes um so there is an eye there and there is another eye here and once you've made a hole you just sink the eye in there like that da -da -da. and then um you think do the um uh, do the other side however if you're needle felting the eye so if you want to make the eye a little bit bigger then you can also just add a tiny little bit of black onto the eye and as i'm felting it in a concentrated spot um i'm i'm just making a little eye patch here so you could just needle felt the eye you don't need to have the glue in eyes or you could do both you could make prepare it with a little bit of a of a black patch there do the same on the other side there and then all you're going to do is you're repeating what I showed you just a minute ago by um, inserting the needle into the center of that black patch and um, making a hole so that the eye can fit in there the glue in eyes can fit in there if you've got beads you can sew them on as well that's absolutely fine we love these glue in eyes because you just put them in and then all you need to do is to make them stay in there you just need a tiny dab of glue on the back of the eye I'm using our glue bottle here I love this glue I love I love the glue not because the glue is so fantastic I love it because the bottle is amazing because it's got this really fine nozzle and it just can fit really close behind the eye you don't have to take the eyes out again because it's a pain in the hoo-ha to try and find the hole again once especially once you've added glue onto it and then just add a, a dab of glue push the eyes in and now we're leaving it to dry because um we've got to get on with the wings and you can again once you've added something you might find oh i've got just got to stab in here a bit more or here a bit more and i just love it i've got a little penguin looking at me there hello hello okay so now we're going going to get um, on with the wings but before I do this I'm gonna have a little look what's happening on the other side and have a look at the comments as well because there might be some exciting penguin names let's have a look um, so we've got um, Lily oh I can see a Lily Munster fairy oh what's a Lily Munster fairy Okay, need to um, investigate what that is. I, it, this is probably not very good if I'm reading the comments from the back up. But, um, uh, oh, you're talking about Jane and her Robin. Excellent. Um, yeah, the Robin workshop sounds wonderful. Thank you, Jackie. It, it certainly is. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's the first sort of joint venture where I'm actually side by side with somebody on the screen. And, and honestly, Jane is really fun. If you, if you want to unleash some of your creativity, you're in safe hands with Jane. Life will never be the same. She's amazing. The penguins, oh no, that's right. Um, um, no, I'm not, I don't need to read Emma's comments, I don't think. Hmm. Okay, I'm just being, I'm just getting the hang of um, the monsters. Of course, I do know what the monsters are. Um, 
Oh, because the penguin is a little bit like that, isn't it? I get it now. Yes, I I can uh, make the connection now. Um, that's yeah. That I think that's um, all chitter chatter. So I'm just going to go and um, carry on. But I've got one other thing that I want to show you because we've got two um, like longer live streams that we want to do. Actually, I should have brought the other one as well. Well, in anyway, in in January we're going to do um, our um, uh, what's it called again? Polar bear on skis. Some of you may have done him already. He was a, ma a maker's box last year, but he's a real fun project. So when it's a dark and gloomy, um, when it's a dark and gloomy January, we want to do something fun. I show them. I show him to you next week when I'm going to do the ghosts. Um, put that in your diary. Next week the ghosts are on um, live stream at one at 1 p.m. on Tuesday next week and then repeat it on Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook. And um, But then in, I think it's, um, I can't remember now, but one of the things that's coming up is making one of these. Da -da -da -da. I love these. We're going to make one of these together. So it's a similar project to the witch project. And you can make her with even better chicken legs than I have. Like she could be a really uh, broad-hipped lady. Um, maybe she could be a cockerel. Just a slightly different tail. Oh, okay. I'm getting confused. It's not it's not the ghost next week, it's the Tomta next week. I told you I've got a cold, my brain is all gone to mush. Anyway, the Tomta is just as good, if not better. And then we save the ghosts for closer to Halloween. So we're going to do the Tomta next week. That is um, on Tuesday and today is the 29th. Then it's the 30th. I uh, should be able to work out the 6th. It's the 6th of October, I think. Hope, anyway. And, uh, oh yes, I also must tell you, on the 6th of October, um, I'm also doing, this has not been announced officially yet, but I'm going to be on the Creative Craft Show live again. And we're going to do a snowman. It's my favourite project. I will definitely share this around. But the snowman is so much fun to do. And um, you all you don't you don't need very much wool, just lots of white, basically. And um, that's a really fun project to do as well. So I'm looking forward to that for next week, which is at 7 p.m. in the evening. And that is on the Creative Craft Show Facebook page. If you haven't been on there yet, give them a like. They've been absolutely amazing during lockdown, supporting us um, exhibitors and makers and designers and um, whatever you want to call us, craft fanatics and fluff addicts. Um, amazingly so we are really happy to give something back to them by giving by hosting um, tutorials which is what I'm going to do next week Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Facebook on their Facebook page the creative craft shows and um, I'm going to go back now to the small closer up camera here so that we can make some wings on this penguin and the way to make the wings is you get some gray just a tiny bit of gray and Again, we're, we're doing this sort of um, folding job here. So I have two similar patches here. Um, it's more by eye and feel rather than getting the scales out. And then again, you are basically just folding them in half. So you've got a folded edge at the top here. It's the folded edge. And then you're just folding it in like into like as if you've got a triangle there now. And then now all you're going to do is you're felting this flat. So this one, you don't have to worry about it keeping it 3D. Felt it flat, first of all, so that it holds its own shape. Now, anything you're felting flat, you need to lift off the mat. And I'll show you a trick now, because we want to shape this more that it becomes a leaf shape, more like that. So to do this, um, felt when you felt it flat, what you do is you're sort of slightly attaching it to the mat, and you're going to use that resistance on the mat to almost, you want it's almost like as if you're trying to drag it. But in the, whilst you're trying to drag it, you actually have a great opportunity to shape your um, wing here by just sort of slightly dragging it and at the same time stabbing into the right places where you need to. And then you lift it off and then you do the same on the other side. And then you do the same um, from the beginning for the second batch of wool. There you go. Nice, nice um, penguin wing there again if you've got loose wispy ends lay them on top of each other rather than attaching them side by side and then you fold this in half fold where the folded edge is like a triangle 
stub it flat first just to fasten it together so it holds its own shape turn it over stub that side as well and then begin shaping it by pulling it as if you want to drag it across the mat and you can you can even see sort of a slight movement here going across the mat and that way you have a really great opportunity to shape it into more of a almost like a leaf shape that's what we're trying to get and then you do this uh, felt it on the other side as well if you've got a multi-tool um, like for example um, one of these that obviously will speed things up I don't want to bounce the table too much so I'm going slowly here um, or if you've got the prim tool that will make it go fast as well so whether you've got that one or that one this prim tool is my favorite tool that will speed things up for you um, to make this, the shape more solid or maybe you have a three needle felting tool which is actually really great for the smaller shapes like this wing here so once you've done this again you have got wispy ends here which you're going to flatten out and then you're going to fasten these wings on as if it's an aeroplane the reason why I'm saying that is we don't want them like this we don't want them um, pointing forwards imagine it's an aeroplane wing so you spread these fibers out put them just fasten them on for now just so that you can let go of it because when you can let go of it you can always move your hands out of the way and then you can have a choice to either leave them sticking out like he's trying to fly away the little penguin or you can um, stab them down so you can shape them down or maybe you can have one up and one down but if you want to bring it down just fold it flat and then stab into the shape on the side a little bit you can even flatten it more onto the body and give it sort of like a little kick out if you want it's anything you can do now with this wing as long as you start out like a like an aeroplane you can have the wing sort of sticking out a little bit or even more if you want to or do the other side so you can they don't have to be exactly the same but if you're putting them on um, differently still make sure that they're on the same height so you don't have one right under his ear and the other one by his feet they do need to be on the same level so make sure about that so whether they stick out or whether they um, sort of come down joined up a lot you can even put a little bit um, of wispy gray over the top especially if you've got our woodland pack you've got plenty of it anyway and um, and then shape the wing as you are as you feel like as you're felting um, you can even stab into the top of the shoulder a bit to bring it closer to the wing if you've got too big a gap there bring that closer together and you can um, shrink the size of the penguin down that way as well you can even still work if you want to with your three needle felting tool if you've got to do a lot more reduction or shaping all of that you can still do even now when you've attached the wings because this Scotland Island grey is a very coarse wool it's a lovely natural color this is actually the color of the sheep nothing has been dyed and um, we really love it for the natural color and that it's a coarse wool which also means it fells down really solidly so you can actually um, stop this for a long time and get it to become more solid my penguin penguin is quite tall so I'm going to make him a little bit more um, a little bit shorter you can still do this now it's the wonderful thing I love about needle felting is that nothing's ever finished until you're finished not when um, the the shape decides it's finished you're completely in control of what you want to do here and um, little penguin is now almost finished and what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna bring the competition to an end now so Emma has got chance to pick a winner whilst I very quickly show you how to make the feet if you want to give him little little feet sticking out and to do this you can um, you can just make a separate shape with your black again sort of just fold it in half and this time we're not rolling it in you can just stab it flat with a single needle or with your multi-tool and you're just making almost sort of like a semicircle here with these wispy ends staying um, staying loose turn it over felt it from both sides and when it's when it's relatively firm then you just 
stab your needle into the front so that it, it again you're almost making like a, a heart shape where the where that dent is at the top of the heart turn it round felt the fibers flat again felt into the top of it and make sure that you're stabbing around the feet like that keeping this fluffy because that is you've guessed it right is where we attach it to um, the base of the penguin so no more uh, penguin names now we are going to bring this to a close and by the time I have finished with um, the penguin and touched the feet um, whilst I've, I'm attaching this here mm, sorry my, my suite is coming to the end that's good timing mm, I'm going to attach the feet to the base making sure that when you stand him up that he's actually still stable and standing nicely so you could even stab into the top um, make sure that it's flush with the base and um, I'm going to announce the winner now and the winner is Pamela from Oregon wow Pamela we're gonna send this pumpkin pack out to you in time for Thanksgiving and um, for you to make amazing pumpkins for whatever celebration you're doing in the States and hopefully it will get to you in good time but here we go that's um, the feet and we we're not so worried what it looks like underneath because it um, nobody's gonna look underneath him and um, and then the only 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 last final last thing that uh, is left to do is give him his little scarf which I'm going to do um, right now but I've just got to get um, a piece of felt which I oh know I have got somewhere here can't be out of felt surely just bear with me oh dear this is this is the trouble when you tidy up when you tidy up suddenly you don't have what you need anymore other than a sniffly nose mm. oh I have got oh no I can't use that I'm looking for felt in case you were wondering well if you haven't got felt you can use anything else as I might have to I've got actually I've got a bit of a ribbon here how about um how about a little um ribbon scarf that's also possible um or you or it could be a bit of lace but lace all these things I've got in my doll making so you could make him a lace collar um I do like the scarf I will be honest um so I have got a bit of white I might use a white scarf and I'll show you another trick of um if you haven't got enough um if you haven't got a long piece of felt i'll show you a trick because what you can do is you can cut um a piece by just cutting um uh, going round and round in circles like a snail so i'm just trying i'm going to even out the outer edge but you can actually make a long piece by just cutting a long piece so now it's it looks like this so it's all a bit um, weird on the edge but I am going to smooth out the edge so even if you haven't got a long piece of felt you can make it long smoothing out the edge now so it becomes almost round there's actually that is too thin there so I'm gonna have to cut it off here but that's definitely long enough for my penguin to wear because once you put it around the neck nobody's gonna notice that it's not um, actually um, completely straight in fact it, it fits really lovely around his neck and I'm just gonna give it a, a tie it together like that you can stab it into his neck so that it stays closed and then if you want to you can cut little um, frilly bits into the end of the scarf as you'd expect a real scarf to have of course and um, that's why you should never throw away any even if they don't look very um like as if they could you could use them for anything i love this this is perfect a nice little white scarf for this little penguin and i'm just gonna go big now because he is there with his little makeshift scarf and if you um, wanted to give your penguin a little colorful um addition as i say they don't they don't normally have that then you can just felt it here on his chest 
and if you want to know how to make the Christmas hat we have got a free tutorial on our website for this we've also got a free tutorial for a bobble hat so if you prefer um, a bobble hat on your penguin you can make that too but I do um, really like this one so hope yours looks as sweet if not sweeter I'm sure they will because they always um, totally warm my heart when I see your makes remember to share it we're on everyone a maker on Facebook and um, we also have um, so I've got to drink some more some more of this tea, um, tea now we also have a big Instagram presence so you're always really welcome to tag us and um, we often share your story on our Instagram as well we're just a squiggly bit the makers with two S's at um, on Instagram and if you're trying to tag us on the uh, on Facebook if you are posting on your own um, timeline or in groups that we um, we also join then you can uh, put the squiggly bit the makers and then dot co dot uk and that will tag us even though it sounds like a web address it's not as long as you put the squiggly bit the makers dot co dot uk and that is on Facebook I think I've just put that piece of paper on the floor that was here and yeah like that there you go the makers dot co dot uk that's our Facebook and then we are also on Instagram and Twitter with just the squiggly bit the makers right I think that's all from me today um, I'm just gonna do a quick check-in I, I as I've been late I'm kind of overrunning but I'm not overrunning but I will just say goodbye to everybody um, um, well done Pamela for winning the pack and of course on Thursday this week we will have a different person who will win it and um, <coughs> uh, oh my goodness okay I think there's something in Dutch that I can't read and I won't even attempt um that's it basically I, I, I don't know what else to say I think I better go and blow my nose before I start making a mess here so apologies for sniffling and I'm um, doing all kinds of other things but I'm entirely on my own here in the room and I'm going to um, sterilize everything before I leave so um, thank you so much for bearing with me I I'm sorry I, I've been a bit of a um, uh, a slow starter today and then talking yet again to myself which um, this time you didn't even see me at all so I like obviously like doing that sign up to the Robin workshop if nothing else just have a bit of fun and enjoy yourselves um, with a bit of chatter chatter and um, yeah and just just a bit of fun remember the otters last day um, end of the day and tomorrow you can subscribe to the otters and then off as of the 1st of October subscribe to the wolf makers box um we're also then starting the poppy makers box um the poppy subscription box for the fairies and we have a new um surprise box coming your way as well which is the woodland walk i think woodland creatures something like that something about woodland anyway and um i will be with you again on the first at 11 a.m on youtube to unbox the makers boxes and the fairy boxes and not the surprise boxes because that's a surprise anyway take care everybody um and we will see you soon bye